Buju, Kinamagi and NA Ireland Dijnikas, and welcome to this production of the My Math Network. Today's episode, Chapter 9, Lesson 10, Hands On Using Models to Add Mixed Numbers. We'll begin by reviewing our last session's work. In each of these cases, we were rounding to the nearest whole number, and the trick was if the numerator was less than half of the denominator, this whole number stayed the same. If the numerator was more than half of the denominator, we added one to the whole number. So you see two plus seven is nine, six minus two is four, 12 plus four is 16, seven minus six is one, one plus six is seven, see, same fact family. 15 minus three equals 12. Over here, we're 15 minus eight was seven, 15 minus 12 is three. Sample answer here include football and basketball, seven boxes and six hours. If you have any questions on that assignment or need further guidance, please reach out to me. Let's look at what today's assignment will look like when we get to it. We're going to be using these models and you can see that we have them there for a number of our problems to be able to use, or you can easily draw them as well. This is a step towards our next part of our learning, which is the adding and subtracting of mixed numbers. And let's begin with our essential question. How can equivalent fractions help me add and subtract fractions? I'll begin right here in the book. You can ha should have your book open or packet open to 671. The expectation is that you will fill this in as we go in order to be able to uh, have an artifact that you can look back on when we do the assignment. So our first step is to shade and label the fraction circles to represent each mixed number. And we're going to go two and one third plus one and one third. And you can see the, and instead of me drawing it, you should shade this in in a way that you can still write the whole number and the fraction. So a light shade with the numbers. Two and one third represents two holes. There's one and there's two and one third. So the piece that was a third, we divided it up into three sections and shaded one in. At one and one third, we sh there's, that means one whole one, and then one third again shaded in. So we had this divided into three pieces. When we draw these out, the, numer the denominator tells you how many pieces total, so three and three. The numerator tells you how many to shade in, which in both cases was one. So that's our step one with the tool or in our models. So let's go to step two. And how many were there completely colored in? That was three, two in the first and one in the third, second one. And how many thirds altogether? If you look, remember back, there was two of them. So how many thirds? Two thirds. Now you can start adding. And one way you can add is to break it down so that the first one, two is one plus one plus a third. And the other one was one and a third. So you could regroup them. So the whole numbers together, one plus one plus one is three plus one third and one third, which is two thirds. So kind of grouping three and two thirds is the final answer here. Go ahead and write that in. This is the formal way that it's taught. I've seen students sometimes will just say, okay, I, I've got two plus one plus one third plus one third. And that'll get you the same answer as well. 
So three plus one third plus one third is three and two thirds. If the book tells you, however, to break it down, the reason you're doing that is that way you kind of get the visual of the each piece of the model having its own spot. So the, the two that were on the top row plus the one in the second row plus the, th the third that was on the top plus the third that was in the bottom. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and clear the drawing. We should have written this in. So your answers did all right. So now let's try right on the top of 672. Shade and label the fraction circles to represent each mixed number. So in the first row, we have one. And this one actually has, um, unlike denominators, and I'm gonna use their drawing skills here. So one and seven eighths represents one whole one plus one eighth plus one eighth plus one eighth, seven eighths. And one and a half, uh, I'm gonna put this part in parentheses because we converted it. So you have your whole one, but this quarter, you can get four eighths out of it. So you'd have four up here, four down here. These are shaded in. This will be helpful when we go to add it together because now we'll have one plus one plus seven eighths plus four eighths. And there'll be stuff to do there momentarily. So I'm going to go ahead and clear this since there was nothing you really had to write in there, at least on this part. I mean, other new shading. Oops. So we had two whole ones and we had 11 eighths, four and seven. You can see how that we got to this step right here. We did together. And that was two plus 11 eighths. So our next step is to turn 11 eighths into a mixed number. We don't want an improper. Eight went into 11 once. There's a remainder of three. So that's where that three comes from. And we keep the divisor of eight. So now I add two plus one is three. And there's my three eighths. So our answer is three eighths. Take a moment just to fill that in and we'll move on. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and clear the drawing. Yes, I don't really have to clear much. Why was it necessary to write one half as one and four eighths? Because we must have a common denominator. The other one had seven eighths. We needed the least common multiple of uh, two and eight, which was eight. All right, you get a chance to practice. Then find the sum. So you're going to shade first and then find it. Um, go ahead, pause the video, complete it, and then unpause the video when you're ready. You may pause the video now. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. One and one fifth and two and three fifths. So together you have one plus one plus one, which is three. One fifth plus two, three, four fifths. And nothing to simplify. Three and four fifths. Over here, we had two whole ones and five sixths plus one and one sixth. This is where it gets interesting. One and one and one is three. But once you add this sixth in here, you have one and six over six. Remember, six sixths is a whole. So we just add that to the four, or to the three, and we get a four. Um, if I move this one over into here, you would have basic niche this way, Niwin colored in. Go ahead and practice a few more. You can pause the video and see you on the other side. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. Two and two thirds plus one and a half. 
First step was to find a common denominator of three and two. That least common multiple is six. So two thirds is one, two, three, four sixths. One half is three sixths. We add together and I get one, two, three plus one, two, three, four, one, two, three, so seven, six. That seven, six means that I'm doing three plus six goes into seven one time. There's a remainder of one. We keep that denominator and now it's four and one sixth. In this case, we have two and seven eighths. There's your one and your two and your seven eighths plus one and a quarter. One and a quarter is equivalent to two eighths. So now we have one plus one plus one, which is three plus nine eighths. is equal to three plus eight goes into nine one time. There's a remainder of one. You get the bottom one and one eighth. It's four and an eighth. Just remember as you're doing this um, that you do need to turn those improper fractions into regular ones. Don't leave it at three and nine eighths. Um, but as you, if you take your time as you go through it, it's not as harsh as it seems. Um, I do encourage you when you're coloring in, shading in, not to go dark. That way you can label them. At this point, I'm going to clear the screen and dismiss you towards your assignment. Remember to shade in here, use those tools. You can draw your own fraction tiles on number three and four and five. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. We'd be more than happy to review this content with you. Otherwise, we can talk in class. Have a minute, Gijigat. Minwa, Mama P.